Link 2012. Take number seven. Hello everyone. Welcome to another Commands 101 video. The first Commands 101 video. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know about command blocks themselves. So this is a very fundamental video. I'm going to be showing you how to do this on both Java Edition as well as Bedrock Edition right here. Just go ahead and give it a moment to load. I'm going to be doing this on my test roll right here. So the first thing we got to do is we actually got to get a command block itself. In order to do that, we do this command right here. Slash give at s command block. There we go. Now I have a command block in my inventory. Let's go ahead and do that on Java Edition as well. Command block. There we go. So now we have a command block. Now you might be wondering, well, what's the buzz about this? What exactly does this command block do? What a command block does is it executes a command that you save in here when red, a redstone signal is sent to it. Let's go ahead and put a very basic command in here and click done in order to save that. Now if we type say hi into chat, it's going to go ahead and run that command as myself. Now the important thing to note about this is that when we run these commands in these command blocks, it is running these commands at the command block as the command block. So what that means is that the command is going to be executed at the coordinates of this command block and the name of whoever is executing this command is going to be the command block itself. In Bedrock Edition, you can actually change the name of the command block right here in the hover notes section. So let's go ahead and set this to hi. When we run this command, in chat it's going to say that hi says hi right there. You can go ahead and see that right there in chat. The interesting thing is you don't actually need a slash before the commands here in order to execute them. Uh, now earlier I said that on Java Edition you click done in order to save the command. Simply clicking the X in the top right hand corner will save it on Bedrock Edition and you can press this plus to have a lot more space in order to type out your commands. Now there's three variations of command blocks but before I get into that I want to talk a little bit about command block output. So if we'll go into this menu here we can see this previous output option. If we check this on this section right here will tell us the output of the previous command. Now here it's not giving the output of this particular command but in general this will help you debug. For instance it'll say this command is invalid because you use the improper format or something along those lines. In Java edition you have the same feature you simply click the O right here. It's important to note that this will actually decrease performance very very slightly so if you're running a lot of commands in your world, I suggest disabling this after working on all of your command blocks. All right, so we know that command blocks execute commands. Now, not all command blocks are created equal. They execute commands differently. What we have right here is what's called an impulse command block. Whenever we send a signal to it, it activates. It says hi, kind of like when you activate, you know, uh, I guess a piston it extends. Now there's different types of command blocks. You can change them inside the GUI right here. There are impulse, chain, and repeat command blocks. Impulse and chain are sorry, impulse and repeat are the easiest to understand, so let's go over those first. So let me show you how to change it in this GUI. You simply click right here. Let's go ahead and put a repeat command block that says hi. So now when we send a signal to this command block, it's going to execute this command on every single game tick. So you're actually going to see 20 highs pop up in chat right here. Actually a, a little bit uh, more than that, depending on the button length. So you can go ahead and count those right in there. I believe it's 1.2 seconds, so it would actually be uh, 20, 24 highs in chat right there. All right, so the final type of command block is what's called a chain command block. So let's go ahead and change this to a chain command block. What a chain command block will do is it will activate a command after the one before it. So as you can see this command block is facing into here, chain command block is right here. So if we go ahead and press the button here, first it's going to activate high and then it's going to activate say one. 
You can also press escape, by the way, in Bedrock Edition in order to save the command. On Java Edition, if you press escape, it actually will not save that command. So just an important small distinction right there. So if we go ahead and press this button, you can see it says hi first, then it says one first, because this is a chain command block. Now this gets us into our second problem right here, is let's say we have a redstone block and we want to activate a whole line of these chain command blocks. We want it to say one, then we want it to say two. All right, so the way we can do this is instead of having the needs redstone option down here, we can click it to always active. Now what always active does is instead of activating when a redstone signal is provided, it actually activates the command block at all times. Now, since the command behind these chain command blocks isn't being activated, they're not being activated. But as soon as we place a redstone block right here, it says hi, then it says one, then it says two right here. Now, it's important to note that command blocks in the world will always activate in this order, the order that they're facing into. Now, it's important to understand that these command blocks only chain in this direction. So let's say we had these command blocks branching off. I should switch these to always active. And we have a branch right here. So this one's going to say, say up. And this one is going to say, say left. I actually forgot to click done there. Save that command. So I'm going to let you guys guess which of these is going to activate when I press this button. Is it going to say up or is it going to say left? All right, so we can actually take a look at the chain. Since it's moving this way, it's going to say up and it's not going to say left because we have to follow the chain. Since command blocks are pointing into this one, this one will activate. Let's go ahead and press that button. Uh, and as you can see here, I have these. I, I set these to always active, so that way they're going to activate as soon as that command block has a pulse sent to it. There are a few other options we have here in terms of command blocks. Let me go ahead and switch over here to Bedrock Edition. We can have what's called a conditional command block. So let's say that you only want it to say one if this teleports to the player. So we can go ahead and TP at all above this command block, one block. So right here, it's going to go ahead and it's going to say one, it's going to teleport us. It's going to say one, it's going to say two, just like that. Now, we're going to change this command to be invalid. So it's not going to be able to activate. In this situation, it's going to say two, it's not going to teleport us, and it's not going to say one, just as you can see right there. This helps out for making larger functions that you don't always want to be active. Let's say they only activate once every 10 seconds or so. If you use a bunch of these conditional command blocks, they're not going to try to run this command if the commands behind them weren't successful. Now, those are most of the major features about command blocks on Java Edition as well as Bedrock, but we have to go over a few parity issues. Now, parity basically means a difference between Java and Bedrock Edition, and on Bedrock Edition, there's actually a couple features of command blocks that aren't even in Java Edition. I'm going to go over those right now. The first major difference is obviously this hover note right here. However, in addition, we have this delay in ticks option right here at the very bottom. Now, what this will do is it has a different effect depending on if it's an impulse or chain or if it is a repeating command block. In a repeating command block, what this will do is it will activate a command every four ticks instead of every one tick if we change this option to four right here. Now, what that means is that since there's 20 ticks in a second, this command block will activate five times instead of the normal 24 or six times instead of the normal 24. If you go ahead and press that, we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, activated six times since it was activated for one and a point two seconds at four ticks. If we go ahead and add a delay onto the 
impulse command blocks or chain command blocks, this is going to delay the command by that amount. So if I press this button, half a second later it will teleport me up here. Then half a second later it's going to say 1. Now this effect falls all the way down, so after half a second it will teleport me up here, half a second later it will say 1, and on that same tick it will also say 2. As you can see right there, it waited half a second before teleporting me, then after another half a second it said 1, and finally it said 2. Alright everyone, that should be everything you need to know about command blocks. I know I went a little bit fast, so before I end the video I'm going to do a very quick review for you all. Command blocks execute a command when a redstone signal is sent to them, unless they have the always op active option checked. Now, these commands can be conditional or unconditional. Unconditional commands will activate whether or not the block before it was activated, and conditional command blocks will only activate if the previous command was activated. Impulse command blocks send one command per impulse sent to it. Chain command blocks will activate after the previous impulse or repeating command block activated a command, and repeating command blocks, such as this one over here, will activate so long as they are being powered by this redstone signal, so every single tick. Now there's an exception on bedrock, where if you increase the delay in ticks, you can actually change the frequency of this activation. In addition, you can change whether or not this command block has an output right here, and importantly, in order to save the command on Java Edition, you need to click Done, and on Bedrock Edition, you just click the X right up here. There's some other smaller differences, uh, such as you cannot copy out of Bedrock Edition command blocks, but you can copy out of Java Edition command blocks, just like so. In order to do that, hold down shift and click a location. This will highlight that region. You can click Control C and Control V in order to paste that command. On Bedrock Edition, you can paste in, but you cannot copy out. All right, thank you so very much for watching everybody. Uh, hopefully you guys learned everything you need to know in order to start out with using command blocks. Please uh, let me know in the comments below if you found this video useful or if it wasn't what you were looking for. If it wasn't what you were looking for, please let me know how I could have improved it or uh, helped you out a little bit more. Till next time, don't forget to contribute, and as always, make the most of your day.